all right you're welcome to my channel again so here we have piecewise functions and uh, what's a piecewise function it's a single function defined over intervals maybe two intervals three intervals depending on what you're giving all right so i decided to show us something so beautiful on piecewise functions you recall that under normal function for instance we have f of x as equal to say 2x squared plus 1 and g of x as equal to let's say 3x squared minus 4x plus 8 for instance now you recall that we can define many algebraic processes on this such as addition subtraction multiplication and even division okay so we can look for f plus g of course of x you know what you have down there is actually the same thing as f of x plus g of x so this is another way of writing that okay so now you can actually sum this and of course if you do you only collect the like terms the ones that have the same degree okay so for instance adding this is going to give us 5x squared here there is no x here so i just bring down negative 4x and then i'll join the constants which is going to give me nine okay so this is the sum of these two and then you can as well do the subtraction following the same approach that is subtracting common terms the ones with the same degrees all right and then division and multiplication also follows right now but how then do you do addition and subtraction and probably multiplication of piecewise functions have you thought about that all right so that is what i said to show us in this video so we have that two functions are defined piecewise all right so that's this and this and then we are asked to evaluate the following so the sum of f and g the subtraction of g from f and then the product of f and g okay so that's exactly what we want to see here recall that all right although we know that that for g times f yeah sorry f times g then you are going to have two x i'm using this instance now plus one into three x squared minus four x plus eight all right so and then you will open up the brackets in such a way that 2x will multiply this multiply this and this one that's 2x squared and one we do the same then you simplify all right so then in this case you would need to be able to simplify in such a way that you will be able to even multiply or add so what do we do there let's get right into it okay so solution so what are we expected to do so you bring up your f of x here so we have f of x as equal to you know what we have there now but before bringing it up i would like us to look at what you expected to do first so that we can do it straight away here so what is that you are expected to see that the both functions have the same intervals and if you watch here the interval of this the first one here is the first interval here is x less than or equal to zero why the first interval here is x less than one okay so the second interval here is x greater than zero why the second interval here is x greater or equal to one so how do you split the both of them to get the same intervals you know so that you will be able because until you get the same interval what you expected to do is if you have the same intervals then you can add the functions that are on the same interval add the ones on the same interval if it's multiplication you multiply the ones on the same interval if it's subtraction you multiply uh, you subtract the ones on the same interval so that's actually all you expected to do so the only thing that makes this different from the single functions is that you expected to make the functions to have the same intervals before any operation 
can be done okay so let's see how we can do that okay so first i will try to interpret the intervals i have let's work on the intervals first so we can decide to have x is less than or equal to zero can work there can you work on this one yes because x is already less than one here and one is more the upper bound here is more than the upper bound here so you can work here so that means i can also have x is less than or equal to zero as my first interval here okay now what will now be the second interval let's you look at this one the second interval is there for you to cover that one that we have removed because here now you have removed one which is more than zero so you will need to bring it in here so you are going to have x must be less than one where one should be less than sorry sh sorry where x should be greater than zero why did i choose that watch here so in the second case here you have that x is greater than zero strictly greater than zero so we are going to be looking at x is greater than zero and uh, the second one uh, sorry the first one here which is x is less than uh, one so watch what will happen here if you turn this remember this is greater than zero so if you turn it this way now you will see that you are going to capture zero is less than x so by the time you join these two so you discover that you have captured the upper part of this okay, so and then you have captured the lower part of this okay so that means this is now going to be for this part i am now going to have x is less than zero and then zero sorry sorry x is greater than zero and x is less than one so this has captured the lower part here and it is still in line with the what we have here watch what we have here so you can see here x is less than or equal to zero and then here x is less than one and x is greater than zero so it has captured and that this one now is also here remember that the second one says that x must be greater than zero okay so and then the last part now what is it going to look like so in the last part i can now repeat this one here again so if i repeat it here so and in this case now is now going to be see what we are doing you will discover that the combination of these two is going to actually get us this how here you have said that your x is greater than zero and x is less than one that means it is moving from zero something greater than zero but less than one so it's in between now here is now continuing with exactly equal to one and everything greater than one so that means it is now combining from zero and everything greater than zero so that means the combination of this is actually going to capture the whole of this everything greater than zero so from here down is a combination of these two and the same is going to happen here so here you can also have your x is greater or equal to one so now and if you also combine these two now you will also get this one and you can check that that is true okay so if you try to combine these two you see that you get the one up here how look at it there here we are told that x is less than or equal to zero and uh, zero is less than x and x is less than one so if x is less than or equal to zero that means from zero down and then here x is greater than zero or less than one that means x is from one up to zero and then from here is zero down so the combination of the two is from one downwards which is exactly what this one represents x is less than one from one down so in doing this you have created three intervals for the two piecewise functions and those three intervals cover the two here and it also called they also cover the two there and so these two three intervals can work on the three of them and give you exactly the same now but the question now is what will be the function that will be in each of the three intervals let's look at it now for f of x let me shift this a little bit so assume that this is for f and then this is for g so which function is going to work here x less than or equal to zero is strictly here so here i can have one minus 
minus x squared now here x is greater than zero and less than one it satisfies this x is greater than zero so anything greater than zero of course anything less than one but greater than zero is still greater than zero so it comes in here so here can be x and then in the last one x is greater or equal to one anything greater or equal to one is still greater than zero so that means the function here is still x so I've not changed anything. Then I come for G. Now, X is less than 1. Look at it here. X is less than or equal to 0. It's also less than 1. So that means it captures that interval. Minus 2X is the function here. In this case, what's the... Sorry, this one was the function. X is greater than 0, less than 1. Anything greater than 0, less than 1 is still less than 1. Whether you are greater than 0, but you are still less than 1, then you are still less than 1. For instance, 0 0.5 is greater than 0, but less than 1. So it's still less than 1. So it satisfies this interval. So that means here it's still minus 2x. And then in the last one, anything greater or equal to 1 is strictly what you have here. So this is this. So you see that the three uh, intervals here are captured by the two functions. So we are going to rewrite the two functions to capture these three intervals. Okay, so we've been able to, you know, compress this or, you know, to distillate the functions into three intervals that are the same. And so at this point, you can perform any operation on them successfully. So we begin with the first one, F plus G. So to add F and G, all you need to do is add the ones on common intervals. So I'm going to add this and this. So that means my new function is still going to be a piecewise function. I hope you know. It's still going to be a piecewise function. So if I join this and this, I am going to have, of course, 1, then minus 2x, then minus x squared. I decided to write 1 first because it is positive. So, and then you put the interval, which is x less than or equal to 0. Then the second one, x and this. So, x plus minus 2x will be x minus 2x, which is minus x. What is the interval? 0 less than x, x less than 1. And then finally, you now add this one, which is... Uh, which is x plus 1 minus x. Of course, this x will take away this x. So we just have 1 at x greater than or equal to 1. So for any value of x greater or equal to 1, the function f plus g will be equal to 1. And then for any value between 0 and 1, the function will be negative x. And for any value less or equal to 0, the function will be 1 minus 2x minus x squared and then that's the same approach for the subtraction and the multiplication which we'll rightly do now so for the second part which i'm going to be doing here so that's f minus g and then um, that is uh, uh, of x let me write it here so that's going to be equal to of course it will also be a a piecewise function as well so you're subtracting now so remember you are doing f minus g so that's going to be this minus this so which is um one minus x squared then minus two x okay sorry minus two x so uh sorry uh one minus x squared minus minus two x so minus negative 2x, all right? So which, if you join, you're going to have 1 plus 2x, then minus x squared. So minus x squared, all right? And the interval is as x is greater or equal to 0. Then we go to the second one, this minus this. So x minus negative 2x is going to be x plus 2x, and that's going to give us 3x. And what is the interval at uh, 0 less than x? Less than 1. And then finally, here you are now subtracting this, so which is y, uh, sorry, x, x minus uh, 1 minus x, okay? So and that is going to be x plus uh, x minus 1, which will give us 2x minus 1, and the interval is at x greater or equal to 1. And this is your f minus g of x. And then 
finally for that we will now have the product of this which is still the same thing this will multiply this and this will multiply this and then this will multiply this that's all in fact let's quickly write it here okay so finally for c f g that is the product so the product is going to still be a piecewise function so this will multiply this um of course you can write this first that's uh, minus 2x into 1 minus x squared right and if you open that bracket it's going to give us minus 2x and then this one you have negative 2x then this one will give you plus 2x raised to the power of 3 right so we can use that to replace so which is going to be 2x to the power of 3 and then negative 2x okay and recall that you would always bring your interval and then this one negative 2x is multiplying x and that's going to be negative 2x squared and the interval is 0 less x less 1 and then finally this will multiply this so 1 uh, sorry x multiply 1 is x uh, sorry and then x multiplying negative x will be negative x squared and recall your interval also is uh, x greater or equal to one okay so that's how to go through algebraic uh, operations on uh, piecewise functions and that's what i said to capture in this video kindly subscribe to our youtube channel give a thumbs up to this video if it helped you and then as well i would like to see the solution to this um because it's going to be a piecewise function it may be a little bit difficult to post a solution of this on the comment section but when you are done with it you can let me know you are done and then you can follow through any of our social media handles check on my bios you will see my handles for facebook my handles on whatsapp in fact we have a whatsapp channel on the group you can join the channel you can join the telegram group or channel as well drop your solution in any of these uh, uh, social media handles and you can also follow us on tiktok we are on facebook like i said we're on telegram join any of them you can also reach me directly through my whatsapp link which is also on the bios and i would always respond to your comments and your text at any time all right see you in some other of our videos bye bye